Hello, let's see if this is working. Do we have a stream? Microphone says it's making noise. How are you all? I can see a few of the regulars in the chat. Let's bring up the list. So, good evening, CC Mark and Jace. Hey, man. Johnny, hello. Uh, Pomona Bimp, Chimera. Yes, tea is applicable to the heart as well. It warms up everything. It's fine. It's definitely good for you. Uh, Tom Dum 3, hello. Right, let's get into some stuff. Avian bees! Yes, absolutely. I, I was tired of looking at the old picture, so it was time to throw something new up. And this time, so, okay, so last week we were designing um, a feature. We were looking at the transform feedback documentation, and that was really motivating. And so over the weekend, I did a bit of hacking and got that in. So I, I probably mentioned last week, it's NaNoWriMo, and my way of doing that is just to pick a few features and get them done. Uh, before it was single stage pipelines, which I actually uh, finished off as well. And um, I haven't finished shared context yet. I think that's gonna probably be this Saturday's hackathon. And, uh, but yes, I did get the transform feedback stuff in. So I think we'll start by looking at that and then we're gonna design the next feature. And in doing so, touch on some bits of Keppel that I've not shown and are not documented and are just kind of in a really hacky state. In fact, just before the stream, I've had to push a load of bug fixes uh, because they're all broken. But let's see what's going on. Hello, hello, hello. AV equals OK, so that's good. So I haven't wasted the last 30 seconds just at you. But um, So let's kick it off. We are... I want to show you some transform feedback stuff. So the first thing we're going to need to do is, okay, a quick reminder of what that feature is in case some of the people weren't here. Transform feedback allows you to, partway through your pipeline, write some data out. So from your vertex stages, you can write data out into another buffer, into a GPU array. And we wanted to expose this to Keppel in a nice way. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually hack up this example. Um, we're going to turn it back into a more traditional blitting of a just drawing a full screen quad and throwing a texture on it. So that will take a couple of seconds. Let's just do that. Defund G, some simple vert tech thing, and we will be taking some verts, which are like twos, and probably nothing else. And we're going to be returning two things. We're going to be returning a vector four which is the vert in clip space. And we're also gonna be making some UVs. And the way we're gonna do that is the normal way. We take the vert and we add, um, what do we add to it? We add one. And um, no, what do we do? Yeah, we add one and divide it by two, right? Oops. I'm slightly tired today, but whatever. Compile that. Um, and let's, this will probably still be fine. Um, and so we will say symbol vert vec2. And we're not gonna be rendering with points anymore. We're gonna be just, it's gonna be triangles, which is the default. So I'm just gonna remove that. Um, the buffer stream we have created at the moment is, um, is an empty buffer stream. So it was useful in our single stage pipelines that we had but not so good now, so I'm just gonna replace it. So we're gonna set F uh, the BS with making a buffer stream. Actually, no, we don't need to do that. We can just ignore that. We have a buffer stream in uh, Nineveh, which is our helper library, which provides all kind of pre-made GPU stuff. It's kind of a standard library of goodies. Um, so get, uh, what was it? Quad stream V2, there we go. Um, so let's, do this and this and this and it's gonna freak out because it said that I'm passing the wrong thing which is correct because I need to go and recompile this guy and then say hopefully continue and yeah we're back okay I think I've got this um, I think I've got those UVs wrong I definitely have come on it's it's between minus one and one plus one divided by two. So let's uh, do it the other way around. Unless I've gone completely mad, there we are, yes. And we're going to, um, seeing as it's inverted, the quickest way to fix that is just gonna be to multiply it like this. Okay, so we've got some, 
we're set up now to start messing around with things. Um, transform feedback. If we're going to write into something, we need it. So let's set up a um, feedback array. And what I want to do is I want to write these this vector uh, from our vertex stage. I want to write this out into a GPU array. So we can imagine, if, say if we were doing GPU skinning or something like this, we'd do all this kind of complex transformation in the vertex stage. And then we might want to save out that data so we can use it in multiple passes. Maybe we got, yeah, multi-stage rendering and we want to do that stuff. So, um, or it might be a particle system. We're updating a load of positions. Uh, that's probably something we'll do another week, actually, is make a particle system using this stuff. Okay, so to use transform feedback in Keppel now, all you do is you wrap the result um, in another list and just say feedback. And if we compile this, it's not going to do anything just yet. Actually, we need to set up that, um, we need to set up this GPU array because I didn't finish that. So I'm going to say these are feedback vec fours and I'll just set it as nil for now. Then we're going to set if the feedback vec four to be a GPU array. Um, we're not going to give it any explicit contents, but we are going to set its dimensions to be just 100. Uh, no, let's do something more manageable for the stream. Uh, we'll set them to be 30, and the element type is going to be vec4s. Okay, so everything should still be working. So what we need to do now is capture. We've told it we would like to capture this into our transfer feedback um, stream so we need to make one of those and this is the first new component that's been added uh, to Keppel for doing this we're going to make I'm just going to call it a variable called TFS oops we're going to set up TFS to be make transform feedback stream nice long name and then we pass in the arrays we want to write into so in this case it's going to be our feedback GPU array that we just made that's that and you can see now we've got a transform feedback stream and inside there's one array um, which is of type vec4 and length 30. And you can have a number of arrays in there if you're writing out multiple values, which we'll also see very soon. And then as per our design that we noodled over last week, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this draw. Let's do it here. We'll say with transform feedback, we will say TFS, which is our stream, and we'll compile. And that's it. Now what we should see is if we pull our feedback array, right at the beginning, we've got all these vec4s, which let's uh, just map car. How should we do actually? Map, nil, print, I just want them in order. There we go. So you can see right at the top here, we've got how many have we got? Six um, vertices written in, which is perfect. That's our two triangles. And, and that was done by this feedback bit here. And that's all. So that's, again, is considerably lower effort than the um, similar thing in just kind of raw GL. Um, but we're gonna go further and we're gonna see that this has been set up for uh, doing some live coding things. But I haven't looked at the chat in a few minutes because I've just been rambling. So let's see what's going on. Let's have a lower as lows. There's a Shimera whist whistling the brown note in the corner, and Darius is doing well. Cool. So that's the first bit. Um, the next thing you can do is we can take more than one value and say that it's going to be written into the transform feedback. So in this case, now we're going to write. Um, a vec4 and then a vec2 and then a vec4 and a vec2 and a vec4 and a vec2 because these are we're going to see that these are being written to the same stream um, I'll go into detail on that a little more right now but if I set them both to be feedback they're both going to be written into the same stream so if I compile this and then we pull our values again I actually just want to put a space here we will see that things are slightly different I actually should I need to make a value that's a little more obviously different. Um, so let's take this out. And let's return a third thing. It doesn't matter if we use it or not. We'll just do feedback. And we'll just say 9, 9. That will stand out at least. 
This is complaining that the next stage doesn't have a variable to accept that data. So we're just going to say, um, yeah, just call it foo. Doesn't matter. We're not going to use it anyway. Compile that. Oh, what's it complaining about? Oh, yeah. I just said vec, not vec2. Get rid of this. Get rid of the warning. Say continue. Oh, what doesn't it like? From stage mismatch between the two things. Hold the phone. Oh yes, I know why. Because we've changed the the types of this GPU function. So now this is the pipeline is using the version of Blit that takes two vector twos. Okay, so let's bring back that error and then we'll say continue. And now it's fine again. Now if we go and pull our feedback array, we can see that we wrote in the first vec four, and then our two nines. And then the next vec4 goes up to here, and then two nines. We've interleaved the data. And because of this, because we're writing into a vec4, an array of vec4s, it's written over those boundaries. Um, if that's what you want to do, that's cool. Um, it's more likely that you're going to want to make a struct to contain these. So let's do def struct g. And just the same as we've done this before with GPU structs, um, going to be FB data for our feedback data. Let's put a little hyphen there. A happy little hyphen. Um, and then we'll say, yeah, let's just call it V4 and that's going to be a VEC4. And V2, and that's going to be our VEC2. Compile that. And then we're going to make a new variable, new um, feedback array. And set it up like before. Feedback FB. Make GPU array. Actually, I'm feeling lazy. One second. Let's just go back and find that one. Um, the difference now is this is going to be FB data. Um, and we're going to do feedback FB. Yeah. Okay, so there's another GPU array using the struct we just created. Now let's take this and use this for our transform feedback instead. And it's freaked out! What's going on? Oh yeah, because I've used the GPU array directly and not the transform feedback stream. So let's go fix that in the REPL. So we're going to set TFS to be a new transform feedback stream, but instead of using the VEC4 GPU array, we're going to use the one that's using our struct type. So again, we see a transform feedback stream, the type of the array, and the length of the array. And now, I'm just going to do a clear screen to make sure everything's... Ah, no. I did pause it there. Oh, what have I done? I've screwed something up. And I'm not sure how. That shouldn't have buggered off. Oh, one second. Let's see what I've done. Oh, I still haven't gone and fixed the really obvious problem, which is that this was meant to be TFS. There we go. And now I've got a different picture. <laughs> okay, so we had to have some problems. Let's go and get the bees back. Okay, so now, slightly labored journey to this, but... um. If I pull back feedback FB, now we can see that we're getting these pairs of values. And again, I'll do a um, map so we can have them. I'll pull the right thing. There we go. Now we can see that we're writing into um, this struct a vec4 and then the vec2, vec4, vec2. And this is using the interleaving uh, transform feedback feature that is available on everything from GL3 upwards. So this is completely portable against every version of GL we use in Keppel. So, um... <laughs> yeah, Pom de Boom, you may be listening carefully, but Shimera will never be listening carefully. But it's okay, I go to his stream and do the same thing. Um, hey Phil, how you doing, man? Um, so yes, that's the basic um, basics of transform feedback using interleaving. But the other feature you can do is have separate uh, GPU arrays. 
And so we might want to write these vec4s and these vec2s into separate GPU arrays. And it doesn't matter if those GPU arrays are backed by the same buffer or different buffers, um, it'll still work. So we're going to have another noodle around by changing this. We're now going to have a GPU array for vec2s. So let's just change these types. There's our new GPU array. Once again, we're going to um, update our transform feedback, but there is one change we have to make to our shader code now. We are going to be writing to different targets. We want to write this this uh, vec4 to one target and um, to one GPU array and this vec2 uh, to another one. So the way we do this is we wrap parens around the feedback and we say which target. It's not the prettiest thing, but it is at least fairly terse. When we compile this, we're going to get an error, which ho hopefully should be have some kind of explanatory nature to it. It's saying the transform feedback stream currently bound has one array bound. However, the current pipeline is expecting to write into two arrays. And it gives you the transform feedback stream, which we can see only has one array bound to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the REPL. And this is where we get into something I'm, I'm actually quite happy with because it's, it's fiddly in GL. It's one of the areas that GL is not friendly to live coding. And but because we've got this, again, nice expressive language, we can do kind of cool things with it. So um, the way we're going to work this is we are going to um, we've got our transform feedback stream here. Let's go and have a look at that. It's transform feedback stream, and it has one array in it. And we have two arrays that we're interested in. We've got feedback vec4 and feedback vec2. So we're going to set the transform feedback arrays of TFS. It'll just fit on the screen. To a list of the feedback vec4 and the feedback vec2. Now here, order matters. The order here is going to be what this uses for indexing. So zeroth position, of course, is here. First position is here. You can swap these around in the code and it works. Um, so let's just do this. Now note, when I when I set here, Kebble's actually going to throw us another message and it doesn't quite fit, so I'm going to minimize this down a little. So there is a restriction in GL that you can't change the transform feedback, transform feedback buffers that are bound whilst doing rendering that's using transform feedback. Makes sense why that restriction would be there, but it's kind of annoying for us because we want to change this value. So Keppel's saying, hey, you're trying to change this, um, but it's bound. And so this isn't possible. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cache these two. And then when we leave the scope of with transform feedback, we're going we're gonna to make the change. And this is kind of nice because we're already in an error. The, the time we're most likely to run into this combination of things is We've got the wrong arrays attached to the transform feedback stream. So we're trying to change them, but we're in this scope because that's where the error is. Um, so we can't change it. And so this is just going to make it easier. So now all I'm going to do is just say continue and everything's cool. So as it left this scope, um, Keppel updated the transform feedback stream. In fact, if we just go and look at TFS again, we can see now that it's got two arrays bound, one vec4 and one vec2. And it did it in a kind of safe way. It just um, as the stack unwound, it fixed up things and then everything carried on. So now, final part of this, we should be able to pull G uh, for feedback transform vec4. So we can see our vector fours that we've written in. And we can pull um, vec2. And we can see that our nines have been written there. So that is... The majority, like the main, these are all the features for transform feedback that we've been supported from kind of 3.3 .3 and up. There are some things that we're going to be able to do more advanced, um, like in version 4 and 4.3 and up. I think it's 4.3, around that, post 4 anyway. Um, that's going to allow for more advanced kinds of interleaving and basically just data streaming and to be able to have nested 
uh, transform feedback back blocks. And the way we'll do that is if you're in a scope of one and you try and bring in another, it'll pause the first one, use the second one, and then unbind that second one and resume the first one. And that's something that's supported in GL. So that's it. So this is this is the basic functionality. This is the result of what we designed essentially last week. And I'm 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 just I'm just pleased with it. I'm just really happy that we were able to knock this together um, so quickly, essentially. It's it's been good. So this is the demonstration part of the stream. <laughs> And, and really the next bit is, again, this isn't one of my, like, I kind of alluded to at the beginning of the stream. This is a um, hacking on Keppel stream again this week. And so we're going to look at designing a feature, but this isn't really something that's going to be generally useful um, or maybe even interesting for those who are looking for the more kind of graphics related stuff. This is just how do we make things more, more cool? And I need caffeine. Jason saying, ah, oh, let's well, you can actually spend most of your time in a recursive uh, debugging session. Yeah, man, it's fucking cool. I just love, <sighs> I love that we can make this stuff work well. Pong Pimp saying that the red outline always frightens me for a second each time it's displayed. Yeah, totally, man. This is just, I should pick a friendlier color, actually. There's no reason this has to be red. I just haven't really cared. The problem as well is that when I'm at work, I, I'm working on a Mac. And so I invert the whole screen. So it's light blue that freaks me out because light blue is like the inverted red error messages. So red means everything's fine. It, like pink is good. Like light blue is everything's fucked. So uh, yeah. Whew. That was a stream. So the next thing I want to yak about, by the way, before I go on, any questions, any concerns, anything like... Maybe I've missed something you know, guys know about transform feedback or you just want to comment on things. I will give you some seconds to yell it out. In fact, you can just yell for the rest of the stream. It's not a problem. But this gives me an excuse for more coffee. Mm. Hell yes. So, one of the things that still bugs me about working with graphic stuff is how <laughs> Shamara is saying you have a lot of questions but none of them relate to the stream fair enough are they are they GL related or just kind of like why how what is this life why is it always painful is that kind of questions or because <laughs> if it's if it's GL related we could we could actually talk about them because I'm not we haven't got anything too hard set to do <laughs> both <laughs> well shoot the GL ones the life ones I'll leave to other people. Um, let's say that. What I'm going to do... Actually, we'll, I'll commit this and send it, seeing as some people might want to look at this code later. Let's push this to git. Gone! That's episode 23. Um, so... If you head there, you can check out that branch. So one of the things that still is really painful for me when working with GPU stuff is just debugging. And part of that obviously is the lack of a step through debugger. And that's not something I can, that's something I want to target. And supporting transform feedback is part of that. Being able to write data out of uh, the GPU in various places is essential for that. But that's also a huge project and not something I want to try and design on this episode. Um, but something that we just do all the time in Lisp is we make a function and then we use it from the REPL to test it. And, oh, it gives back the wrong result. Okay, let's change it again and, and keep going. So what I'd like to be able to do is a function like blit here. I want to be able to call it, like, say, blit passing in a UV... Um, more sensible UV. Why, why am I doing this? It's not going to work anyway. We haven't coded this feature. But whatever. Foo. And um, yeah, we want to pass in some sampler. I would like to be able to pass in these values and call the GPU function. 
and have it go and dispatch that. Actually run the thing on the GPU and give me back the value. And I know that's gonna be a very expensive round trip, but I don't care because all I'm really interested in is like, it only has to be fast enough that it doesn't feel sucky in the REPL, which means on the order of like a millisecond or two is completely acceptable. Um, but it's so we can start iterating on the development of a function just in place. That would be really nice. And one of the ways we could do this is to take these GPU functions and just cross compile them into Lisp, right? We could just, like for simple cases, it's, it's really trivial, like defund g foo x is an int and like y is an int and we're just returning x times y this gpu function is trivial to translate back into regular lisp and we'll get the right result uh for most cases though right like because if we pass in two large integers and multiply them common lisp is gonna, if it goes out of the range of like whatever whatever numbers we pass in common lisp is going to promote to the right value type so if we multiply two massive numbers we'll get a big number back but on the GPU, that's not going to be the case because we would go outside the range of the integer. Is it going to wrap around? Is it going to do what? We would want that behavior. So actually making Lisp behave like GL is incredibly hard. And different GPUs have different quirks. Different driver versions have different bugs. So if you're trying to find out what your GPU is doing, it doesn't actually help to be running a simulation of another GPU because that's not what you're debugging. So we want to run it on the actual GPU that you're using to run everything else and get those results back. And so that's the goal, is to be able to run a function, GPU function directly and get these values. Um, that's gonna be our pitch. And Shimera's posting questions. Shimera's saying, I really wish someone would work more on GLSL toolkit to add stuff like static function, call checking, type clearance checking, and all these static checks that you could do. Uh, so you don't have to wait for the GL compiler to tell you it's fucked up. That's true. I mean, I, I, I mean if you're doing a type system in there, you're always kind of coming to the point where you're saying, which... Oh, I see, like for, yeah, actually, sorry, I'm, I'm talking crap. Shimera's got, a, Shimera's got a project called GLSL Toolkit, and it's awesome. It, it allows you to pass um, GLSL into an AST and manipulate it. It's fucking cool. It's at the heart of his, um... I for... Why have I forgotten the name of your bloody engine? Trial uh, game engine that he uh, streams about on Sundays. Uh, which you should check out as well. It's a very different approach than I do, but it's very cool and it's just ballsier than anything I was willing to try. Um, but it's really useful and we do actually make use of it in Vario in one place. If you um, if you quick load Vario.import, um, why am I gonna, I don't really have any code to show. Anyway, if you quick load Vario import, you can pass it a GLSL string and it will give you back the um, Vario code that is equivalent to that GLSL. And that's all Chimera's work. I did the tiniest bit of pattern matching on top of it to make it look like my code. Um, so it, it, it's awesome. It's a, it's a, great, it's a great library. Um, so what's going on here? I kind of wonder how hard it would be. This is Jace talking now. I kind of wonder how hard it would be to make a lighter weight wrapper around Vario that can be used directly with CL OpenGL. Not hard, not hard at all. The, like, actually you could do that. I wouldn't want to do it on a stream because it's just dealing with, yeah. Okay, so simple part of it, trivial. Absolutely trivial to get the strings out of Vario, the compiled GLSL, and make a GL program out of it. it takes no time at all. The difficulty then is um, how you pass data up, right? Like how you, it's, it's getting all those uniforms. It's, it's dealing with all that stuff and the, and just marshalling the data and all that stuff is fucking painful. Doing things like um, make texture and handling the conversion between Lisp types and um, oh, was it texture internal um, formats and pixel formats for the upload and download? That is just an ass, and that's really like that's that's what Keppel's value proposition is. We just make that simple. Um, but yeah, you could totally do that. But but yeah, that because the the first. 
the first version of Keppel was just, yeah, it was the output of my compiler pushed into a GLSL program. I was just using CL OpenGL. And it was just, I would, I would go through the tutorials from the Arc Synthesis tu tutorial series, and I would do one of the tutorials, and then everything that sucked, I would try and wrap up. And then do the next tutorial, and everything that sucked would wrap up. And it just gradually grew. And then I got really addicted to the idea of doing, like, some higher order functions in GLSL and stuff like that. So there is more in Keppel than it needs, but also, yeah, I, I don't want to use anything with less right now. But it's a cool idea. Um, but yeah, you could totally do that. Yeah, the redefinition stuff is uh, it is is not very complicated. Again, you create a graph of objects, a, a graph of the relationships between your GPU functions and your pipelines, and whenever you change one, you walk down the tree and recompile each of them and spit it out to the out to the GPU. But then it's a case of when you want to do it, because I'm interested in getting errors at compile time, which means I'm doing that propagation chain at compile time. But then you can't push it to the GPU at compile time because your your compilation is happening potentially on a separate thread from where your GL context is. So that's why Keppel internally recognizes that things have changed. And then first time you call the pipeline after a recompilation, it's going to do the final GLSL generation and the push up to the GPU. So there's lots of little details that make it kind of fiddly. And of course, handling multi-threading and all that kind of stuff is a pain in the ass. But, but totally, I get, if, if you're interested in doing that, by the way, Jace, just, um, just hit me up because I'm, it, it wouldn't take very long to get a result going in this. In fact, if, let's just see if there's anything left in the REPL from another session. Aria, no. Oh, well. But yeah, if you do rolling translate and then do var what is it? List varia make stage and do a vertex stage with no arguments and whatever version you would like. And it'll just return a vec4. And then we'll do a similar thing, which is gonna be a fragment shader. And it's just going to turn red. Whoa! Didn't like that. Continue. Okay. What didn't it like? I should have actually looked at the error for a second there. Compilation of a form, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, okay, fine. Continue. I forgot to put some quotes here because we're calling a function, not a macro. So yeah, Jace, if you would start off like this, you would get a result. You call GLSL code on this. Really? <laughs> you would call Vario GLSL code on the result of the rolling translate. And those are the, that's the strings you have to upload. So yeah, pretty simple. And Chimera is saying, no joke, I recently dreamed about the fucking treehouse dream and Dream died the map perfectly right and smooth. Oh, that's painful, man. Oh, that sucks. So you had to just wake up and <laughs> realize that, oh, not cool. I haven't had that with code yet. I guess my priority is a little different. I generally dream I'm there's a load of food and then I wake up and that just really pisses me off. Yeah, different things make us angry. Basically, fuck my subconscious. What a piece of shit. <laughs> Testify. No, cool. So, right. Back in the game. Jace, hit me up if you want to do cool things with Vario. And uh, until then, we're going to play with this. We're going to try and make Blit do things. So we have to work out the details. So what is happening? The first thing we need to do is... We need to pick the correct version. So the difference between, well, one of the differences between GPU functions uh, and regular functions in Keppel is that GPU functions can have um, argument overloading. And so we are going to have to find the GPU function that is applicable for these arguments. 
Um, so the way I think we'll do that... Well, let's just start fucking around. Let's um, make some space. And just start noodling. Defun noodle. We're going to take some values. Um, we're also going to take a name. So for now, we're going to write noodle and then the arguments we want to pass. Noodle, the name of the function we want to call and the arguments we want to pass. And then we'll clean this up later. Um, so what we're going to do is we need to work out the vario types for... Right, so the uh, the um, signature of a GPU function only includes um, the primary arguments, the ones that aren't uniforms. So the varying arguments. Sorry, is the correct terminology there. Um, so we don't need anything after the first keyword argument, basically. So let's find the important args. And we'll do that by saying the subsection, let's make this down to new line, of the arguments starting at zero and ending at wherever the first keyword is. That'll do. Not rock solid, but it's a place to start. And then let's return those important arguments. Then we run this and we can see that we're getting back the first two, which is what we want. So that's fine. The next thing we want to know are the vario types. Um, of these two values. Now, I, because again, obviously I made all this stuff, I know what's lying around in this code base. One of the things that Vario allows you to do is just use a um, special variable, um, one of the like common lists global kind of variables inside your GPU code. And if it doesn't know what it is, it will go and ask, um, it'll ask Keppel, hey, What's the type of this? And Keppel, Keppel can give back the result. And so there is a function somewhere in Keppel, like expecting Keppel pipelines. Um, and it'll be a private function, but that's fine. And it will be guess, guess a vario type. There we go, fine. <laughs> and we can pass it, a, like say one, and it'll return int or 1.2, it will return a float. So these are the vario types for certain things. Oh yeah, and it does vectors as well. Okay, so cool, we're gonna take this. And we're gonna map our we're gonna map our important arguments over that, and we'll return the v types. Oh, and I'm just gonna use name up here just to get it to stop moaning. Cool. So now, if we run noodle, we get vec two vec two. Nice. So the next thing we need to do is find the GPU function called blit that takes two vector twos. Now. Okay, so in common lisp, there is a, a concept of function. Now, so normally you would write something like print with the, and this little reader macro at the beginning um, is shorthand for this function. Um, you can see if we run this, these are, these are exactly the same. Um, So, we should have, I think we do have an equivalent for this in Keppel. So you just say blit and uh, vec2, vec2. Now the problem of course, yeah that works. The problem is this is a macro, not a function. And I want to know if there is an equivalent. Is it find GPU function? Nope. Um, I'm just going to jump to this source code and have a look around and see what we've got. So this macro is calling this function. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. I should expose that. Oh, there is something called GPU functions. And that's a... Is that exposed though? Probably not. GPU functions. Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, right, and the reason for this is you can pass in blit and it will re return back all the names of 
Yeah, that's that's not what we want. This is all the different overloads of Blit. So, what I actually want is this guy. We'll just use this. I mean, if it if it's valuable, we'll we'll have to. Like this is a Keppel feature, so we can use stuff that's internal to Keppel. Keppel pipelines again. It's private GPU function. Now we can pass it in just as a value, so we can say blit vec2 vec2. Yeah, we should be able to use symbol function or something like that. That's we'll we'll need to add that to Keppel, like a GPU equivalent of symbol function, but it'll be form function or something. Ugh. Not a very nice name, but anyway, this works. This is this this is what we need. So, uh, um, the G funk that we need is this called with um, consing the name onto the V types, and then we say G funk, and now we can remove this name here because we're actually using it. So if we call noodle now, wherever noodle is, we get back the object GPU function. So the next part of this is we need to make a pipeline, like a GPU pipeline, um, that is going to run this GPU function once and return the value into something. Um, if we do, if we, if we can do this in the vertex stage, we can use transform feedback to get the value back. So that would be kind of cool. Oh, wait, there's something I didn't show you. Is, uh, is everything still running? Let's just say play. Fine. That'll do. Whatever. Oh, not that. <laughs> um, I added another feature the other day as well, which was, where are we? Did I delete that pipeline? Why did I do that? Oh no, fucking fool. You just put a load of returns and stuck it down here. Noise. I've added support for um, single stage pipelines, which only have a vertex stage now. So last week we did fragments uh, ones, and this one we did vertex. So now we can run this and it complains. Why does it complain? Oh, no, have I fucked it up? No! Okay, the reason it's saying an invalid number of arguments is that only the fragment shader was taking uniforms. And if we go down here, we'll have to comment out the uniform upload there. And then we should be able to say continue. This is now running this pipeline. Wherever it is. Sorry, this pipeline. <laughs> And it is, um, it just disables all fragment rendering entirely. So only the vertex stages run a little bit more, just enough to capture the, the uh, transform feedback. And what's great about this is we don't have to waste any GPU time on something we're not interested in. So if we want to use this pipeline for processing data on the GPU, like we're going to make another week, maybe next week, we'll make a particle system. And the particle system is going to run entirely on the GPU. Um, we're going to have GPU arrays holding like the, all the data about the particles, the position, the speed, and all that kind of stuff. And then each frame, we're going to run a pipeline that goes and updates all of them. And because it's on the GPU, it'll be nice and fast. It's already The data is already in the right place for us to render all the visuals just afterwards, which is really cool. Um, and, we'll, and so what's nice about this is transform feedback is still working, um, even though there's no fragment output. I, I just like that. I think that's cool. And again... It doesn't take much work to um, to use it in Keppel. But again, I'm not okay with that picture. I want my bees. Give me my bees. Right. Let's get back to the feature we're designing. So, so far we've got a GPU function. So, what can we do with this? Let's go and inspect that object. And there's not much there. It's just the name. So what we're going to need to do is use some more internal features. Again, this is why I'm saying these streams are not particularly geared toward people who are interested in actually doing graphics with Keppel. This is me just playing, really. But 
if it's interesting, like if it's not interesting, do let me know because I don't want to do too many streams of stuff that's not relevant to people. But also, if you like, if you like seeing someone hack on stuff, let me know as well because I find this stuff fun. So kevl.pipelines, there is a such a thing as a a GPU func spec. Right? I think we can just call it with the GPU function. Yeah, and then we get the specification um, for this GPU function. And that has a lot more things in it. So if we just inspect that, we can see over here it has the body. This is the, uh, this is the code of that function. Let's uh, swap some things around here. We were talking about blit. So its name is blit, it's here. This is the code in the body of the function. These are the input arguments here, which are there. These are the uniforms there. And there's just some other metadata, which is internal for um, internal for Keppel. Um, actual uniforms, the only reason, I'll bring that up. Um, actual uniforms are differentiated from these. These uniforms are the ones you specified. These uniforms include the ones that were implicit based on features of Vario. Like I said before, I think I showed, if, if you go back and watch the Vario stream that we did one time, um, you can, like I said, you can use special values. Actually, we can just do it here. Like, um, we can do this. Let's define a variable called factor. And this again is on the CPU side and it's 0.1. Let's do that. And then we're going to go into our GPU code. I really hope this works because I have broken things. And multiply this result by this value. And we do this and we can see there's already an effect, right? In fact, I'm going to change this to def parameter so it's easier for us to change. And then each time we update this value, say two, one, this uniform, this, sorry, this value is being uploaded as a uniform, but it's being done automatically for you. In fact, if we go and look up Blit again, like if we just, get, okay, let's get Noodle, and then we look up the spec, and then we inspect the spec. Oh, why, why is that not in actual uniforms? Oh, I'm confused now. That's not correct. Hmm. I'm going to have to look that up because it's clearly working, but it's not recorded there. I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure what that means. Let's look at the cache compile results. Um, oh yeah, this knows about it. Like the implicit uniforms down here. This is the compiled result of... Ah, yeah, this is different as well, but never mind. It's recognized that there are some implicit uniforms. The uniform is called factor, and it asked Keppel what the type was, and it thinks it's a float. Internal stuff, it's fine. Again, like if you're interested in how in how to use these kind of things, they're all exposed in Vario. Anything that I can do in Keppel, you can do in your own project, your Keppel-like project or whatever, um, just using Vario. So, but I want to start here, and I need to go and look into actual uniforms in future. Um, what do I need to do? <laughs> So we want to make a pipeline. See, there's one thing that's that, that, that's kind of interesting. So when, right, when you pull data from um, from the GPU, Keppel like again grabs it, marshals it back into Lisp types, and gives it to you. When you call pipelines like uh, like Blitter here, you when you pull a pipeline. It pulls back all the GLSL code that was actually used on the GPU. So this is this is the last time it compiled. This is the code it compiled and sent off to the GPU. But GPU functions are kind of weird, right? Because they don't ex they're not real things in standard GL. They're a Keppel concept. And so when you pull um, this, I wanted to give you something sensible. Um, but it was kind of it was kind of tricky to do. So what I do is I 
generate a little vertex shader. I generate a shader, actually, a pipeline. I do generate a pipeline here um, with a dummy call to this function. And so you can see in this case, it's not being used as a stage. It's just being used as a regular function in, your, um, in the pipeline. So I've already written some code to do this. So maybe I just need to go and find that because that seems to be like a a good place to start. What's going on in here? Oh, cool. Oh, it's nice to hear this is okay. So Jace is saying it's nice to see some Keppel internals. <laughs> Less time. It helps when you have to reverse engineer. By the way, thank you so much for reporting the issues and stuff. Uh, to everyone who's been reporting issues on Keppel and Vario, it's a huge help. And it's also massively motivating. Getting a bug report from someone else is so cool. I mean, I know it means I've got stuff to do, but it also means people care about the thing enough to report it. And it's super cool. Anyway, um, just because I can read the code doesn't mean I understand what it does. Dude, I wrote it and I don't understand enough of it. Um, the, the, the weekend, a lot of the time spent on the weekend was actually just dicking around with the fact that, you know that massive macro I was talking about before that does um, the pipeline? I showed it last week and it looked terrifying. Yeah, I had to get back into that code again because of, well, threading related things. I, I basically refactored how a bunch of that worked and that was a pain in the backside. It really was. So, um, yeah. Oh, nice. Shimera, props on your bot. That's very useful. Um, so Pomdepim linked to a tweet by Carmack and the bot pulled it in. That's useful. Okay, so Carmack said, anyone that has me in too high a pedestal should see me fumbling around with Git. Yes, true. Um, man, Git's just, Git's one of the greatest pieces of software ever written. Not the greatest interface, but uh, Emacs fixes that with Magit. But god damn, it's good software. Anyway, right, don't need to be waxing lyrical about that. I need to go find out whatever this code is because it's doing what I want. It's doing it pretty interestingly, actually. How does it, okay. Yeah, it's, this is pretty cool. See, I want it, I want to pass up all the values as uniforms, but Whatever this is, is going to give us a good place to start. So let's go find out. I'm going to jump to pull G. Holy shit. Um, and we are pull G a list. So let's go there. Um, pull G of a list is going to call pull spec common with the asset name. And then do some things with it. Actually, I should go and look at what it was going to do with it. Um... If the result was a list, it compiles it. If it's a compiled stage, it grabs the GLSL code. Um, that's cool. So that's not it. We want this. Um, if there's caching, then we can go and look for a cache. Wait a second. Okay, so I think this is actually happening earlier. I think this generation happens the instant you ugh, click the wrong thing. I think it happens the instant you compile defun G. And the reason is when you compile defun G, um, it wants to type check your code. And to do that, it's got to, yeah, it's got to do something with Varia. So this has got to be doing something. So this this code is going to get fun. Well, hairy. That kind of fun. Let's jump to defund G. It's a macro that calls a helper function. A common function here. And it is going to do some stuff. It handles things to do with doc strings. Ah, I need to change how this doc string passing is done. Um, because that's kind of stupid. I can use other macros. Stop focusing on that and focus on the problem. Right. Passing the lambda lists, yes. Doing some asserts to make sure they're valid, yes. Def GPU fun. This is the meat. Oh, there it even says. This is the meat of defun G. Okay, and it does some stuff. Makes a GPU func spec that will pop be populated and stored later. Okay. Adds an external function definition to Vario to make sure it'll be, a be called on load. 
Okay, add external function, this here. Okay, so that's the bit that makes it available in general. Um, test and update spec compiles the code to check for errors and log dependencies. This is called at runtime. Um, yes, that's probably gonna be related. Make GPU func spec is called expand time to write list functions that will have the same signature as the GPU function. That's fine, we don't need to worry about that. We'll replace that one day with, once we've done this feature, that's gonna be what we replace. The purpose of recompile GPU function and pipelines is to recompile the functions or GPU or pipelines that depend on this GPU function. Blah, 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 blah. Cool. At runtime, this looks for any GPU function that listed this function as one of its missing dependencies and calls update spec on that. Okay, right, so test and update spec is really where we wanna start. God, I love it when I actually leave decent documentation for myself. Okay. So, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. If the compilation throws, it could not. Okay, so that's about what happens on errors. Not interested in that. If it succeeds, then look at the list of used external functions and check which one of them, blah, blah, blah. We also record the uniforms in the compile results. The uniforms in the definition are the public interface, but the compiler may have removed or modified the uniforms. To this end, we may store the final uniforms. That should be stored. Okay, that's down in here. So in here, there's some stuff. Test translate function split details. That sounds, that just sounds ridiculous. What is this? So there's something called stage names. Okay, so that's all of the stages. Um, test translate function split details. This does something. Hey, it's talking about dummy things, dummy calls. This is related. Okay, so whatever this is, I want it. Get lowest suitable GLSL version from the context. What context is that? This will be the context that is defined in the GPU function itself. Okay, so I kind of want this. but without all the extra magic. Do this. Yeah, kill it. And let's just test this. Uh, where's our play with vert stuff? We're gonna make a file called foo and we're gonna say that we're inside the, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna say we're inside Keppel's internals. Keppel.pipeline. We've got all this code. There's too much of that. Okay, so right, defund. What? And we are going to try and get this to do something interesting for Blit. So this guy. Let's just take this, go up here and shove it in a comment. Right. Um, I'm not sure how useful this is going to be right now. I'm just going to say it's, I'm just going to hard code it. Let's just say it's only for version 4.5. Um, test translate internals to arg. What is this? Set actual uniforms. Don't need that. And I don't think I need that either. Okay, so we only need this. So... Test translate function split details. Okay, so we need the name, the inargs, the uniforms, the context, the body. Most of this stuff was in that thing we were looking at earlier. So let's get this. Oh, what am I doing? Can I just say blip vec2 vec2 here? Because that would simplify my life. No! Okay, I won't. Um, I'll have to do whatever that other thing was. What was it? 
I guess it was noodled. Actually, let's just add this to... Spec is this called with g -funk. Or return spec instead. So now noodle should actually return the specification. Cool, we can work with that. So in this function, we're going to say what? We're going to go and get the spec by calling just this for now. We'll hard code it. Calling noodle. Eventually all of this logic is going to move inside noodle and it will be simple, but um, we're fucking around for now. Actually, that's a good point. Noodle is just a fuck around function as well. Let's go and do that there. No, but... The reason I don't want to do that is... Probably stupid reason. It's just because these are different packages, it's just a bit of a butt to move around between them. So, yeah, let, let, okay. It's the right thing to do. Let's, let's move this here. We've already got the spec. Um, what we want to do then is... In fact, all of this is still fine. In fact, now we're inside Keppel Pipelines, we don't have to have these accessing private functions going on. So it is better. So let's do this. Um, we've got the specification. And we're going to do something with it. And that's going to be the result new. And we're going to rename this slightly different. Let's call it... Oh, fuck it. Let's just call it Poodle. I can't be bothered to think of names right now. REPL Kevl.pipelines Poodle exists. Cool. And we're going to pass it with the same arguments that we did to Noodle. And it's going to freak out when it gets to that last um, call inside there. Let's uh, move this around a bit. Sorry. I know I'm jumping around a bit, but I'm just trying to get settled here. Okay, so... It's freaking out when it's hitting this call because most of these variables are missing. So we need to go and get them. Um, and the way we're going to do that... The way we're going to do that... First we're going to do is we're going to throw a breakpoint in here. We're going to say break, foo. We're going to look at the spec. We're going to call poodle. And we're at that breakpoint. Um, we're going to jump in to here. And we're going to go and look at the specification we've got. And with that open, I'm just going to go back to the foo file, and we're going to go and get all of these arguments. So from spec, we need a name. We've already got name, so that doesn't matter. We need inargs. That's the first one. Well, there is a function called inargs, so let's... Fine, we can just get that from spec. Um, and then we need uniforms. And I think there's a uniforms function as well. Whoops. Uniforms. Nope. Ah, no, I think there's actually a helper macro for this. One second. I think it's called with GPU func spec. There we go. And then you just pass in the specification and then all of these are available in this block. So if I compile this now, <laughs> all the arguments are provided. Maybe they're wrong, but it's a place to start at least. Let's remove the breakpoint and see what happens when we... We'll go and get rid of that warning and we'll call Poodle and it breaks. Cool. Multiple functions named star that match arguments. What have I done? That doesn't sound right. Foo star. There's nothing called star in here. Where did we get that from? Test translate raise enclosure. Okay. Oh, it's missing some types apparently. This is interesting. Oh, I think I might actually know why this is. And the way I'm going to get around it for now, rather than complicating this any more than it already is, and it is, is I'm going to remove this um, implicit uniform for now. We'll deal with that later. We don't need extra complications right now. 
So what happens if we call this? Then we get something. There's a compiled vertex stage. And I called it with the wrong stuff again. Because it's very OGLSL code. This is our test function. That's where it came from. Sweet. So we're on the trail of something. So we want to go and find that and modify it to do the thing we want to do. And that will prove a concept. And I'll be blurry. Um, Pomdom saying he's already been a CL, always been a CLI guy for get at work. Magic home early. <laughs> home only. That's really strange, dude. I just I'm. I liked magic before because it just made it made it easier for me to learn Git concepts. But when it came to rebasing, holy shit, it's just so superior. Like interactive rebasing and doing all that kind of stuff is so fast in magic, and so much of my day involves doing stuff like. Especially at the moment, I'm doing some. Is that stuff I can talk about on stream? We have things coming down the line in Fuse that are cool. Um, and some of the branches I'm working on are pulling in a lot of cool stuff from other people. You know, there's a lot of rebasing going on and a lot of a lot of tweaks here and there of stuff. Magic is so awesome, Jace. I agree. Oh, they, there's, oh, there was a Kickstarter. I missed that. Braces on separate lines. Disgusting. What are you talking about? What, in my GLSL? Or in my, uh, in my Lisp code? Yeah, that, that's... <laughs> We're hacking, man. Oh. Lukewarm coffee. And it's still good. Right. This thing, this Vario Internals hoo-ha. This is going to be hairy. Let's see what's in there. Whoa, okay, right. Um... So what does it do? It goes and makes a stage. Okay, yep, that's fine. With no in arcs, some uniforms, and a context, and then it generates dummy declarations for stage. Okay. Taking in a stage type. Let's go and see what that is. Ah, okay. This is because if you're in a, um, if you're, so if your code, actually, wait a second. How does it know what stage type it should be using? Oh, I see. Okay. So it is going to Right. Wait a second. That's why this first is here. Okay. So what this function does is it will go and try and compile that code for all of the different kinds of shader stage. Some of them are not going to work because some code um, is valid in any GLSL stage and some of it's only valid in certain GLSL stages. Like, for example, frag coordinate is a frag cord, it's only available in fragment shaders. And in some stages, the same thing might have a slightly different type. It might be an array of something rather than just the thing itself. So in geometry shaders, I think GL position is probably an array. No, that's, that, I, think, I can't remember. There's some details. Basically some of them, the same variable in different shader stages can have slightly different types in some cases. Pretty sure of that. And so the way it gets around it is it just runs this a bunch of times, returns them all, and then Keppel just picks the first one and uses that as um, the one it uses for its... Um, actually, that's interesting. Oh. Come to the wrong place. Test translate raising. Da, 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 da. Right. Yeah, Kepler has some interesting 
logic. So one of the things is when you, let's see if I can uh, show this. Let's go back to play with birds. And these are, again, some of the details that just emerge when you start making this kind of code is, let's see if I can make something ambiguous. What would have a different behavior in different, oh yeah, let's just, just do GL frag chord, for example. Just use it. If we compile this, oh, that's gonna compile, but now it thinks that that is a uh, fragment stage. Ah, I need something that conflicts. I, oh, I, I, can, I, can, I can make a, bug probably what would be it what's a simple thing we can't do um oh come on chris something really simple um add together a vector two and a number that should throw an error okay so one of the things i wanted um keppel to do is because a gpu function doesn't have meaning until it's used somewhere it's like what it will become it depends on its context it can't tell if it's going to be used just as a function or if it's going to be used from a vertex stage or a fragment stage, or which stage. So if it, if it finds an error in your code and the error is the same for all of the stages, then it just shows a single error. But if they're different in any way between different stages, um, it'll show these different choices. So you can see here that it's the fragment stage says there's nothing there's no definition of plus, uh, which is valid for these two types. But all of the rest of the stages say that this, this variable isn't, isn't available. So you could have made either of those problems. Did you mean this to be a vertex shader? In, in which case, why is this here? Or did you mean it to be a fragment shader? In which case, why is this, right? So this is the, these are some of the things that because of Keppel's choices for making things composable, Things are, yeah, they're, they're, they're more ambiguous until they're actually used. It's kind of like dynamic typing and all that kind of stuff. You, you resolve problems later down the line. And so what, kept, what, what happens is when it's doing these tests, um, it allows you to say, hey, actually retest this code assuming a certain stage. I'm interested in just uh, doing this as a fragment stage. So I hit five. It's going to rethrow the error, or it's going to try and recompile, which is going to hit the error, and now we're just going to get the one that's related to this one stage. And you can still choose to, I'm going to switch to evaluate this as a vertex stage, as a fragment stage, all this kind of stuff. It's part of the debug workflow that I wanted in Cap. And the reason I went into that is because... Um, We're running into some of that code now, so we probably will have to futz around with it to see what um, what we want to use, what we want to keep. Let's go back to foo. Jump to test compile again. Okay. So this is the thing, isn't it? We want the first. Yeah, and, it, and if any of them pass, it's a pass because it's just a test compilation. So we kind of want this. This is the thing we want. And this is in Vario internal. So again, we're ripping stuff out that's private. We're gonna run into all kinds of, uh, all kinds of things here, but it'll be all right. Let's, um, let's go with this. Let's see what we can do. Um, Right, so gen, um, we're going to generate what? Um, a cool stage. That'll do. Um, we're going to take in a load of arguments. And we are going to take in stage names. But I would like to... Actually, I'm going to hard code this because we don't need to pass it in every time. And the stage names, I want the priority to be slightly different. 
because right now it's going to try them in in this order and then it picks the first one um, so I want it to tr try and make a vertex shader first and if that's not valid try and make a fragment shader and otherwise otherwise do a geometry shader and finally do the tessellation stages because these guys are going to be hard basically I, I don't want to have to do this um, in fact, I'm not entirely sure how... We will support this, but it's going to take a lot of work to get right. So what I might actually do is just comment these out for now. Oh, screw it. We'll delete them. This is a test. We don't need to keep everything around. Stop overthinking it. Two stages. Vertex or fragment. They're the only ones that are valid for us. Why have we got args instead of in args? Args is now in Args. Oh, wait. No, that is that is correct. Let's take that out, try and compile it. A load of things are going to complain. Oh, yeah. Allow stem cells. No, we're not going to have stem cells yet. Um, stem cells is what makes... Um, It allows for ambiguous types, so it allows, in, in Vario, it means if it can't work out the type of something, it'll give it the stem cell type, and then as the value travels, as the rest of the code is compiled, it might become obvious what type that is. So if it's if that value is being used in a position, in a function, which only takes a float, then that thing must be a float for it to be valid. It's used for inferring in some strange cases, again, to do with implicit uniforms and stuff like that. Uh, we don't need it for this test, so we've got rid of it. Um, where is it actually used? Because we could just... Stem cells allowed, now. Largest primitive for stage. Cool, that's actually quite useful. Compile this. Okay, now we're going to get all kinds of warnings. And it's just a case of we're going to have to call a load of private functions. So, Vario, dun -dun, do that. Let's just do this everywhere, because it's going to be a lot of this. Undefined function. Oh no, it's vario.internals as well, isn't it? Oh, nice long names. Oh well. Stop thinking about it, Chris. It's hacking. This is the point. Right. Get stage. Get stages from here. We don't actually want to stick a big name in front of that. Largest primitive for stage. That's part of vario internals. Yes. And this. And this, and this, this is all part of internals. And allow stem cells is never used. So we get rid of that. And what isn't used up here? Stage kinds is never used. True. Cool. So that's got smaller. So gen call stage has now been trimmed down. So let's go and use it here. And it takes a name, in args, uniforms, context, body, nothing else. So that's got a little simpler, kind of. <laughs> So now when we call poodle, we get back a result. Again, I'm going to just call GLSL Vario's GLSL code around here so we can have something nice to look at. There's our test stage. Now, instead of these dummy values, we're going to want real values, and they're going to be the values that are passed up. Um, we would like to... Here we... Hmm. <laughs> I kind of want to pass them up as uniforms. So the way it does this at the moment is, oh yeah, here's, here's where it actually generates the function. So it takes the definition we've given it and generates a local function and then generates a dummy call to it. So what about if we, don't pass in any arguments here. What if the dummy call then, dummy call simply then becomes name? Um, get dummy out for stage. All oh, right, that generates a val some default value that it can use. We'll hack on that later. Um, if we do this and then try and use it, it's going to complain that 
um, some arguments are missing. The symbol UV is undefined. UV in... Oh, blimey. This is a real... Sorry, I'm sorry that... It's just such a small screen to try and show you what's actually going on. So, we need to pass up UV and Foo as uniforms. So we could just take these and add them to the uniform list. So if we take... Where's our in args? Here. Let's just add them to the uniform list. Make stage, append, in args to uniforms. Compile that. REPL. And it worked. Sweet. So, blit. Where was, oh no, it was in the file. Oh, blimey, man. What am I doing? Okay. This is the function we're trying to re generate a stage for. We went and got its definition. And then we made a little uh, stage which passes all of these arguments up as uniforms. And then runs it like this. So now we want to capture the output of this and return it to Keppel somehow. Late binding. Thank you, sir. Phil. Good man. It's the terminology. I suck at these things. So getting the values back from a vertex stage is going to be done with transform feedback. Getting them back from a fragment stage is going to be done with an FBO. But the first part of it was just generating a valid stage. And we kind of have that, which is really nice. So what we'll do is we can, oh, this is kind of interesting, actually. We can, let's just ticking over to see if this is going to work. Let's go and modify that code generator again. And we're going to return back two values, some made up value that it comes up with. And this. And we're going to wrap this in feedback. And now it's generated an output. It's run blit, stuck it in the output. And we'll be able to use transform feedback to get that value back. We can write it into a GPU array. So. Braces on separate lines. Yeah, in the GSL. It's, I just prefer it that way. It's cleaner to me. I like things a bit more spaced out when I'm looking at C-type languages, basically because I just find them more difficult to read in general. They just, they, there's, there's, yeah, like you say, they've got different... Because the braces have different meanings... Oh, sorry, that's not what you're saying at all. But anyway, because the braces have different meanings, I need to be able to see very clearly what context I'm in, and just spreading that out a bit helps. And it is uglier code, like writing if and then always having the braces and then the else on a separate line and the final clause and the else oh, fuck it. it's just all day writing that kind of stuff um okay what time is it now Twenty one twenty three. who's still here <laughs> respect to you for hanging in there um but this is kind of cool we're getting closer to something i'm not sure if we really need to do all this fucking around to get this seems more complicated than it needs to be maybe not though um yeah we'll just have to see but it is giving us some valid code back and that's cool um coffee and then then to work out what to do next Because ultimately what's happening here is this bit is the code that actually um, is going to become the GLSL. And how we return the value really depends on the kind of stage we're using. So if we just focused on vertex stages today, if we could just get that working, that would be really cool. Not me.
So, how am we going to do this? I think that a lot of this is overkill. And so, let's just... Yeah, let's strip it down. Okay, let's, yeah, let's strip this down a lot, actually. We're just going to do a vertex stage. Only support vertex stages right now. And the way we're going to do that is we'll get rid of this function. We're going to strip everything out. Okay, so, bam, that's gone. This is gone. We're just going to make a stage. Um, in fact, we're not going to make a stage. We're going to have less than that. Let's go and strip out all of this and just return the code and we do want actually we want the code list the code and the primitive because that will be useful we will need to know the primitive as well but later on we don't really need to know the primitive for for a single value it's going to be a point if we're passing it the vertex stage get rid of that as well we all need the code um, and now this is complaining that we don't have a stage type. It's going to be vertex. We're only making a vertex stage. Again, vertex. Right. And this saying... Inargs are defined and never used. Uniforms are defined... Really? They're never used? I deleted too much! Where did my uniforms go? Oh yeah, okay. Sure. And let's um What do we need? We do need to know the uniforms. Well no, this is just assuming. Okay, so what do we what can we remove? In our uniforms context, fine. Takes a name and a body and returns a Vertex stage that expects everything to be passed up as uniforms. Fine. Gen call stage. And we're not going to do first because now it's only going to return one. And it doesn't take nearly that many arguments. It takes in a name and a body. So name, body, boop. GLS, oh, yeah, I was calling GLS off code on this. Okay, for some reason I didn't want to copy that. Okay, so this is the code that we need. Man, we, we don't really need... This could have been a lot simpler. But no, this is taking care of some cases. But do we need them? Ah, oh, I feel like I've gone on a really long walk to do something that's actually very simple. Um, yeah, because if we know the vertex stage, then we really don't need any of this. Sorry, this is what you get. You know, you just, I'm just trying to do too much in one go and I should just slow down and take one case. Let's just get one case working. And that is to generate a pipeline that fucking works and actually does something. Um, so if this is it, just, if all we actually want to do is make, let's see this. We might even remove all of this as well. Let's do. Okay, so let's say we wanted to create a GPU lambda. Which, won't worry about the name. Um, it's going to have some arguments, and they're all going to be uniforms. And it's just going to be the result of appending together the um, inargs and the uniforms. That's going to be our argument list. And then we're going to add the body. What does that look like? Yeah, that looks, that looks useful. And the reason I've done it with lambda g is that there is a function in Keppel, which is not advertised anywhere. Um, in fact, no, this one I just added today, so it's definitely not advertised anywhere called compile g and you say nil because we're compiling a lambda g we hit return and it explodes oh yes it's not uniforms it's uniform fool
fix up that. So let's remove this. What a load of work that was. For something simple. Bring back the raffle. And fuck it, we'll do the compile actually inside here as well. Compile G. So this is compiling some code that describes a GPU lambda, like a GPU function, into something else. Whoops. What did I do there? Declaration is badly formed. Okay. Oh yes, because I should be using comma at. We want to splice those arguments in. Or we could have just used const. Okay, so now we've got a GPU lambda. How does it help us? Well, we, we, what we've done is we've taken blit, we've reformed it into um, something slightly different. Is that what we want? Ah, I don't know. No, this is, ah, oh, What am I doing? What am I doing? We want to capture the output. Guys, what am I doing today? Um, oh, hey, Ethan. Bloody hell, what's going on in here? There's some activity. Jesus. Which Lisp will be best for beginners? Um, to be honest, I would just pick uh, one that actually works well. So I would say, again, I'm biased. I like common Lisp. So I would say out of the common Lisp implementations, I'd recommend SBCL. It's got a fantastic compiler. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, not closure, fair enough. Again, for games, I'm, I'm not sure that's... Again, depends on the kind of games you want to make. Games is a big area. Um, using Emacs awesome, then I would say for the best, I mean, the, the development experience of SBCL is uh, using Common Lisp inside Emacs is amazing because it's so interactive. <laughs> People are still teaching VB. Yep. Used to languages like C and Rust and so on. Should I make sure... Uh, should I... Should I make sure that I use the REPL to run programs rather than make executables? Yes, so most um, all of your development is going to be done interactively. I'm sure someone else has mentioned that as well. Um, you can dump out um, executables when you're done, but you don't generally do that till very late in, this, late in the game. And the thing is, like, there's less... Again, we're still compiling to machine code, so you got the benefits of that kind of thing, but also um, you can your recompile time stay nice and small when you're doing this interactively. Like the first compile is kind of fairly long because you're loading in all the project, but then you're compiling one function at a time, and that's nice and fast. So slime and CLisp are my best bet. Don't use CLisp. For the love of God, don't use CLisp. CLisp, oh, sorry. CLisp is a particular implementation of a common of, of the common Lisp standard, and it's not a particularly good one anymore. It's very out of date. It doesn't do everything according to the spec. It's kind of bad in that case. It just makes it more difficult to deal with things. Um, if you want to compile to C, use ECL. Um, developers there are great and very active. Uh, but again, SBCL is kind of a no-brainer. Um, <laughs> Shimera has covered it. Um, also, CCL is a great implementation. SBCL's compiler is my mind bit better. It gives you more information. It's kind of cool. Um, oh, CLisp is in common Lisp, not the compiler. Uh, yeah, CL is the only shorthand. Otherwise, you'll confuse Lispers. <laughs> uh, oh, and Shimera's covered that as well. Why don't I just I just listen? <laughs> Listen to Shannon until he starts shouting about things, and then then don't listen. Um, let's have a look. Oh yeah, yeah. Use use Shimera's portable to get set up. That's awesome. And yeah, 
as far as book recommendations, if you're going to grab one, probably ANSI Common Lisp. I don't have it to hand here. But it's a lovely book, half and half, kind of like introduction to the language and then reference guide. And it was really helpful when I was getting started. Um, yeah, I mean, Common Lisp isn't too complicated. Like, it's not, it's not a, it's not that bad. Like, it, it, I don't know, I think you can get into it kind of gradually. I mean, the object-oriented system in it is very powerful and therefore can be fairly complex, but Land of Lisp is great. That was, that, I, I, I took a week off and just did that. That was, that was great fun. So, basically, I have been farting around with this and not getting anywhere. So I'm kind of annoyed at myself right now. So let's just do something to make some progress here. We're going to return. It's a vertex shader, so we've got to return some values. So we're going to return four of those. And then we're going to return whatever calling name is. Um... I'm going to not compile that for a minute so I can look at the code. Yes. So we're going to get a GPU function that takes some things as, as uniforms. It's going to call this. It's going to return it as its second result. Um, that's fine. Because it's a vertex stage, we're going to be capturing it with transform feedback. So let's put that there. Fine. Now we will be able to use transform feedback. Now we're going to use compile G. Um, to turn it into a GPU function. So that's actually compiled. And now we need to turn it into a pipeline. So we should be able to do pipeline. This is another feature of uh, Keppel that is completely undocumented. Um, there is a... Normally you write things top level, right? So you have defun G, which is the equivalent of defun. And now I've introduced um, Lambda G. Um, which, as you would imagine, is, whoops, lambda, G, um, which is the it, which is the GPU equivalent of lambda. Um, and so the last thing we need is the kind of inline equivalent of doing def pipeline. So creating a lambda pipeline. And th this stuff is really untested, but it might work. So pipeline, gee, this is where it could all go wrong. Context is is just nil. We don't need anything there. And the G pipe arguments. Ah, damn. No, this isn't quite right. Oh no, no, no. I think we can use this. I think we can just pass in that last thing and then. Oh yeah, okay. So this is actually a reasonable error. It's saying when defining a pipeline with only one stage, you need to explicitly mark what stage it is as Keppel is unable to infer this. Nice. So we're going to do vertex. Um, holy shit, that works. Cool. Okay. This doesn't need to live in Keppel pipelines anymore, I don't think. Let's get rid of that. Let's dump it back in here where it's meant to live. And all this stuff. Okay, yeah, there were quite a few things that required Keppel pipelines. Doesn't matter. We'll just get the private functions. We can deal with that later. With GPU funks back. Yeah, that's internal as well. Lambda G, undefined. Ooh, that body? Oh, really? Oh, that's nasty. Okay, yeah, that, that macro really was only meant to be used in that. Fine, fine, fine. Food on lisp. Bloody. In package kettle dot pipelines. So optimistic there for a second. Oh yeah, what's going on there? Oh, I thought I deleted food. No, it's still there. That's odd. Not sure what I'm doing there, but let's compile that. Get back in business with Poodle. And then we're going to take the last bit, which is turning it into a pipeline. And do that. Pipeline G with the result, this result 
as the vertex stage. God, that's ugly. Maybe this. Maybe this will be okay. Now when we call Poodle, we get a pipeline. Sweet. So now what do we want to do with it? We want to run this. Um, and we want to run it on the GPU, which means we're going to do map G. Um, in fact, we'll, we'll probably do this here. Actually, let's push the let around this and just go. Pipeline is this. Then we're going to call map G um, with this new pipeline that we've created um, and we're going to pass in these values as the arguments. Okay, so to do that we need to know their names but we can get that from the spec. So the spec told us um, our names is going to be, let's comment this out for a second. Oh, let's just ditch this code. Um, so we have inargs. Let's comment this out because I don't want to be creating loads of pipelines all the time. Right, we've got that. We're appending it to the uniforms. Okay, so we've got those. We're only interested in the names. So we take the first of them. We just use code somewhere so it's SBCL is not going to complain about it all the time. Those are the names. Um, Kevl takes uniforms as keyword arguments, so we're going to need to change them into uh, to keywords. Key names is, do I have a function for that? Key WD, maybe? No. Um, okay, so it's just lambda x intern, <laughs> whatever that is, uh, string name, oh no, symbol name of x is going to be interned into the keyword package. This is just a disgusting leak of stuff, but that's fine. It'll be fine. We'll come out in the wash. Map car. The arg names, turn them into keywords. That's fine. Um, then we're going to zip them up together with the um, actual values we passed in. So map car. Whoa. Cool arts. Map car. List. No, well, map can. That's the equivalent of zip. List with um, key names and args. And let's see what we get back from that. Does not like that at all. Key names. Oh, of course, this isn't. Needs to be let star. Okay, so that's the keyword value. Keyword value. Why is that last one not that? Oh, yeah, of course, because these ones are passed in differently so we don't want to <laughs> we want to actually treat these separately so let's take the inargs and make the pairs there um, inargs Args. 
Don't want to have car. We're just running out of space, damn it. Let's move this down to another line. Oh, I hate tiny fonts. Anyway, I uh, hate massive blown up stuff. This will do. Okay, list that with Y. So it's just, yeah. Let's start with key names and just see if that's coming out right. Yes, UV and Foo with their values. And then um, the uniform stuff is just... Um, screw it. Uniform stuff is everything after the first keyword argument. So let's do this. Split is the position. We use split here. Ah, really? Okay, fine. Wow, what the fuck is going on there? Sorry. Getting a little annoyed. I am just very aware that I'm running out of time at the moment. And I really want to get one call made before... Uh... Done. I'm really glad you... Uh, I love having your gang here. It just means I can relax and know that you guys are taking care of things while I'm just shouting at the computer. I will be back momentarily. Um, this is append. Okay. Well, that's completely wrong. Oh no, that's right. That's perfect. Yes. Cool. We're going to compile the pipeline. Then we're going to map cut. Uh, we're going to map G over that pipeline. Um, oh, wait, though. <sighs> this isn't particularly good. Map G is a macro, not a function. So I can't... Uh, how do I send these arguments to it? God damn it. I hadn't thought of that. I might have to hack this in a rather nasty way. What does this expand to? Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so we could just say fun call p line keppel context. Um, and the call args, but we want to do that as an apply. And see what happens when we do this. Oof! Odd number of key arguments. Did not like that. Okay, so what did it call it with? Well, that's kind of annoying when it doesn't make it clear what it's actually trying to do. Um, Yeah, that's, that's really not helpful. Okay. Um, instead of that, do list. Let's just see what you came up with in the end. It was going to call this guy with the context and then this stuff. Why is that an un... Oh, it feels like we're so close. And yet, so far. I want to print out this. Let's just, let's print the code as well so we can see what we're actually trying to call. Yeah, it's got... Three uniforms, UV, Foo, and Sam. UV, Foo, and Sam. Vec2, Vec2, Sampler. Oh, come on, what else do I have to do? It is possible, of course, that the 
that because this is untested parts of the code base that the pipeline that's being generated is a bit fucked up so how do i test that how do i find out um oh come on That would be messy. But it might, yeah, fuck it. It'll tell me what's going on, probably. Here we go, here's some madness. Just do anything. Okay, so in here somewhere is the lambda that I'm looking for. Not for public consumption. There we go. Yeah, there it is. The context, the stream, the stream. I'm probably not passing in the stream properly. Fine. Yes. Get rid of that print statement because it's horrifying. So when we call it, when we do apply, we're meant to call it pass a context a stream. What stream can we use? Let's just use um, Nineveh's get um, pod stream. Let's just see what happens if we try and do this. Cool, something got called. Right, okay. And then I want to pass in Let's just do this all in line. We can just leak memory everywhere. Uh, result is make GPU array um, with no initial contents. We need to know what the return type. Wow, we need to know what the return type is. Fuck. Um, in this case, can we just hack it in for now? I'm just I'm just slamming on this. Okay, so it's a vec4. Let's we we can extract that from the code up above. Let's do vec4. This was too ambitious to do in a stream. Is actually implement this, but never mind. Focus, Chris. We've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, dimensions is one, um, and then we're gonna meet. We're gonna use transform feedback. So we make. Oh, come on, what is it? Kettle make transform feedback stream using G array. Cool. And then we're going to use our brand new feature with transform. Um, so let's just, just use Kettle. With transform feedback with TFS. Do that call. Then immediately after it, try and do pull G on the G array. Ah, what are we doing? Holy cow, that return a value. No way. <laughs> no way. But it's zero, 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 zero. What? What does Blit expect? Let's just... Oh my god, what, what have we done? Um, Blit takes a UV and foo's irrelevant. And a sampler. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. If it was anything, ah, oh, if it was anything other than zero, I'd be so happy. Um, oh, come on! What would it be? It's possible that transform feedback doesn't work with dynamically created pipelines yet. Um, with uh, yeah, lambda pipelines. I need to come up with proper terminology for all this stuff. Uh, God damn it, so close. We're making one call. Oh. 
Oh, come on, have some values. What do I need to do? What have I got wrong? Apart from everything. We make the transform feedback, we bind the array, we do with transform feedback, and we do this. We've got like five minutes left. How do we get this right? Then we pull the value. It should be there. It should be there. Screw it. Let's, uh... Let's give it a few more. Let's just see what... Ah, there's no values. It makes sense. I mean, it was going to be in the first one if it's in any of them. Um, what does the code look like again? Print code. Oh, it's coming down to the wire now. It's writing the result of blit into feedback. This should be fine. This should be fine. It's calling blit. Blit's going to get access to Sam and UV from the keywords. I know it's what's stupid as well. I know in the next half an hour, I want to be able to get this right. But, um, oh, it's so close. What is it that we're missing? We're calling GPU code here. This is good. <laughs> I mean, this is progress, but god damn. Come on, Chris, work it out. Is there anything we can really quickly check? And our pipelines code. Let's just. I'm going to jump into Keppel and go and have a look for something. Pipelines, GBU, lambdas, um, transform feedback. Okay. Handle transform feedback. Is it using it? It is in there. We're getting into this code. Oh, but we're not necessarily using it. Okay, so bring this up. Yep, we're going in there. Oh, what did we do? I just have to be we don't know this week. Wait though, no wait! I think I know what it is. Where's um, where's Foo? When we make a pipeline, come on Chris, where is it? When we make the pipeline, we have to specify that it's taking points. Otherwise it's gonna expect three vertices before it's going to do anything. Bummer, okay. Yes, that's because the data stream that we're providing is also in triangles. Where are you? Um, come on. Stream. G array. No, that's the transform feedback stream. Make buffer stream. Here it is. Primitive. Points. Yes! That's it. Okay, we're done it. Cool. So this is... A <laughs> Oh, in the nick of time. Okay, so what we have here... Oh, I am sorry you had to watch this... Uh, <laughs> just mess for the last hour. But, so what have we done? We have created a function which is will take a GPU function, will take some values, will infer their types, look up the correct GPU function, build a pipeline that calls... that runs this code, Create everything, dispatch that off to the GPU, capture the result in transform feedback, and write it out to our REPL. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Okay, so that is not how you're meant to present streams, but fuck it. Um, what I need to do next is turn this horrible mess into something sensible. Um, so we've got it to, after we've got the result, we need to dispose of all the resources we made. We need to be able to handle multiple kinds of stage. Um, and that's the code that's already in Vario that I tried to use earlier. That's when we'll pull that stuff in. 
and we'll have ways of like hey which which stage should this be running on what kind of trans what kind of feedback can we do from those stages that kind of stuff well i hope you enjoy, enjoyed that uh completely unusable information oh look look we can do stupid things we can just we can pick where on the image we're sampling from and that response time is fine given that's like round tripping everything and all that kind of stuff this is silly and we should be able to use it with i mean we should really confirm that those are the right values but ah, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter times my 255 in your head it, it's the right values it's fine cool so this weekend i will turn that into a feature and so next stream we should be able to um test gpu functions from the REPL, any gpu function at all and be able to actually see what values we're going to get when we run this for real so thank you so much for hanging out on the stream um i will i will take a couple of seconds now just to look through the chat because i know i've just been ignoring you for the last half an hour or hour or two and um <laughs> and then we'll call it a night because it's quite enough of this um yes back on the slime chat like there there is there is no environment that i've enjoyed developing in as much as this and that's kind of disappointing in the way that like we should be able to do better but slime is really good it could be a lot better though there's there's plenty of things um closure is a cool language though i have no problem with closure but it doesn't sound from what i've heard its development environment just isn't as tight as slime and its debugging experience is nowhere near uh <laughs> Phil Fogg, sorry man. I, I went as fast as I could. It was just a mess. Leak it and move on. What's the worst thing that happened? Wet pants. Um, cool. We are done. That's enough of that. Probably won't have to watch this stream again. Okay, thank you so much, folks. Um, if you've got anything else to ask, say you've got about 20 seconds to get them to me, including lag, and then I'm going away. But thank, no, thank you, guys. Yeah, it's, uh, you made this stream fun. I was just shouting over the top of it. Get those last 10 seconds in. That's all. Good night. Okay. We're going with what Phil says. And we're off. Thank you. Bye.